Hey what's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4. We're going to be checking out the 2018 Porsche Cayman GTS today. There's a new car here for the spring season and from what little bit I've got to drive it so far, I'm very happy with this car. It feels great out on the road and it has a really nice sound too. It's not the best, but they definitely did a pretty good job on this car. There's not a lot to check out here in Forza Vista, but we will give it a quick look over. Um, unfortunately you can't like explode the back and look at the engine or anything like that with the way the Cayman's put together but not really a big deal. It does have a very cool design on the interior. They did a really good job on this car and I really like the red stitching accents. Looks a little weird with the way I painted the car but kind of whatever. You don't see the interior that much unless you're actually driving first person. We'll go ahead and start this thing up and then take it out for a quick test drive stock. I do have to say the one thing I'm kind of like iffy about on this car is the taillights. They look kind of goofy to me when they're lit up. Overall I have to say I really do like the styling on this model. It's not too much different than the other Caymans but it's a little more aggressive. Sorry about those gear grinds there, I was switching views with my controller, I always forget it'll do that every time you touch a button on the controller. I did put some different rims on this thing, just so I wouldn't have to go back and find them again when we did go to customization. But besides that, this is the car, or just completely bone stock as it comes. You can drive this thing fairly aggressively in stock form. You can don't really have to lift too much in a lot of these corners. It's very predictable. Six gears kind of worthless though, especially going uphill like this. Even when it gets a little squirrely like that back there though where I dip that tire off, it's still really easy to recover this car and get it back under control. I was fairly surprised when I drove this thing the first time, it just, you can tell it's still built on the same style chassis as the other Caymans, but it does not feel quite the same on the wheel. The other ones have a very fine line between being in control of the car and then breaking a little bit loose and not being able to recover from it. This thing, you can push a lot harder than the previous models in the game anyways. So let's go ahead and just jump back over here, start checking out the customization. I know you can actually put down some decent power in this thing from what I have checked out before already in the customization. Alright, so we'll start over here in conversion. I haven't checked out the engine swaps yet, that's kind of what I figured, the 4 liter flat 6. Not going to do that, I want to stick with basically the way Porsche built this thing out of the factory and just upgrade the performance on it. Because I do like the way the car handles and drives a lot, I like the power band too. Honestly, the Forza Aero on this car is actually not bad at all, so you know, if you really need it for putting down some downforce at really high speeds, if you have that aggressive of a build, then it wouldn't be a horrible option. I'm honestly really surprised this thing's as grippy as it is, considering it's only got 235s on the front stock. I thought they were wider than that, but I, I guess I was wrong. And we'll go to, yeah, we'll do 285 rear. Go ahead and add this wheel spacers on here to get a little bit more stability out of this thing. And we're going to toss all the drivetrain upgrades at this. Race brakes, obviously, we're definitely going to throw it on race suspension. So we can drop 544 pounds from the car, which that's not bad at all, because this isn't a super heavy car. 
really 2600 pounds should make this thing fairly quick even with just the stock power throw our cam upgrade in it we'll do flywheel do engine block to get a little more displacement and torque and i think we should have enough left for exhaust maybe intercooler my goal is just to hit the top of s1 I don't know if I'm able to get it exactly. There we go. Perfect. Sport intake brought me right to the top of S1. So that's going to be our build for this thing. Pretty basic. Nothing too crazy. I just wanted to, like I said, improve what they already did with the car. It should be a little bit more of a handful to control with the upgraded power, but I have a feeling it should still do really well racing. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into a little bit to the tuning really quick, guys, and then we'll go out and take this thing in a couple races. All right, so I, fi or I did go in, tweak just a little bit around, mostly gearing and tire pressure. I didn't really do much besides that. The thing does sound a lot better upgraded. I really like the way this thing sounds overall. It's not super aggressive, but it's not what you would expect from this car either. It does not have the 911 sound, obviously, but it does have its very own unique sound, and I'm actually a pretty big fan of it. As you can see, my tune just kind of fixed that spacing in the gears a little bit, so it does actually pull all the way through 7th gear. I did tweak my alignment just a little bit to get a little better grip out of the car around corners. Very stable car though, I really enjoy taking this thing through the back roads like this. Like I said, I did test it out just a little bit yesterday. I had a slightly more aggressive or build on it as well though. I wasn't just aiming for the like S1 900. I did build it up like a little over halfway S2 I want to say, but even then still it was extremely drivable. I don't understand why I still have water on the windshield of my car after loading into this race, but okay, Forza. Oh, come on, AI, stay out of my door. Oh, God. This is a fairly tight circuit for this car, but it's still doing all right. Get a little sideways there. Very controllable in the slide though, for the most part. Oh, real sneaky move up the inside. This thing has a ton of low end torque though. It really can light the tires up if you give it on the throttle a little too much coming out of a corner. Not the fastest build for sure. I probably should have put a little bit more into power than handling on this thing, at least for the cars I'm competing up against. But it's really just a very fun car to drive. It handles amazingly. And when you push it, it does slide out, but it's very controllable when it happens. So you can actually just kind of really drive hard and have fun with it. Come on, at least get forth. Oh. The gears are so short in this thing. Definitely not my best race. 
I mean, I was doing everything I could just about to try to catch up, but it just was not happening. So for our final race, we're going to appear at more Heritage Circuit. Hopefully we can get a little better position at the finish of this race than the last one. That was a real sketchy move, but it worked. Tagged real good on that from that guy behind me. Try to keep the rear end from stepping out too much this race and maybe actually get up on the podium. Completely fumbled what gear I was supposed to be in there. Still definitely getting used to this gearbox and this thing. It's got a very strange gear ratio, even after me going through and doing some tuning to it. At least first through third. After that, it's pretty normal feeling, but first through third's been a bit of a pain for me to get used to. You can really see how this thing just grips and holds its line, though. And as soon as I say that, I break traction. <laughs> As long as you don't do silly things like I did and purposely get it to break free by driving like an idiot, this thing will really just grip and hold to the line that you pick in the road. It's really crazy. You can definitely feel in this car on the wheel when you're going to lose traction to or when you just completely overshot a corner and have way too much going into it. Somehow managed to not completely ruin myself, but com just wasted that overtake. Just com threw it away. Somehow made it through there and still managed to keep first. That was a super sketchy line through there, but I had to make some kind of move if I was gonna get around him and hold him off to the end. That is a very tricky corner right there, too. Just when you think you have enough speed shaved off for it, you gotta cut off just a little bit more to keep you from sliding through it. There we go, that's more like it. Definitely a fun car to drive. It just has a very, very distinct character on the wheel. It definitely doesn't handle quite like the other Caymans do here in the game. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check this out and you haven't unlocked it yet, head over to the Forzathon, knock out the... I can't remember what it's called. Later. Let's go take a look real quick, actually. See you later, alligator. That's what it was. Well, I feel like an idiot now, but anyways, go ahead, head over here, knock this event out, and you can get the car unlocked. It definitely is worth it. It's only been available in this event, and it's a distinctly different driving and feeling car to the other Caymans. It sounds very different, too. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you get a chance to check this car out. If you did like the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.